This is 567 Cape Talk, your number one news and talk station. Hi, I'm Bianca Reznikov and we're at the Design in Darbo where over 2,000 Cape Tonians and people from all around the world, both young designers and leaders in the field, have flocked to the Cape Town Convention Center to listen to a program of international inventors and creators talk about design. We're going to speak one-on-one -on -one with some of those inventors, so come on, let's go do it. Norwegian-born Cecil Talas is at the expo this year. She's a scent expert, which means she specializes in collecting unusual and different smells from all around the world. We're going to talk to her about how Cape Town smells. In your own words, what is it that you actually do? A professional in-betweener. What does that actually mean? That means I'm everywhere and nowhere at the same time, because I smell molecules and their air everywhere. That always, I always can work if I want to. You speak about the perfume industry camouflaging reality. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean everything, uh, be it the body, be it the floor, be it the city. Um, So-called bad smells or different kind of smells are removed and covered up or camouflaged or deodorized or pasteurized. It says on the Design in Daba website that you've been sniffing around Cape Town. Tell us, what did you find and what does Cape Town smell like? I've only done a couple of neighborhoods. I was here before Christmas two weeks and uh, I did the uh, Longstrat. Yeah, I did the whole area. I did the Malay area a little bit. I did the Kirstenbos. And I went to water waterfront, to Sea Point, a little bit in the Clifton. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. But of course... Is there one particular smell that stands out? The sea. The sea, and it's different. And it's very interesting when it mixed with all the others, you know, and I'm able to to, to kind of scan that mixture and that's what makes it very special from, you know, and very particular compared to other I mean, uh, harbour cities, you yes. know, absolutely, you know. How can smell assist in education? Uh, many, many ways. Um, I've done a lot of uh, projects, uh, I mean, first of all, to place smell as a, as, a, as a part of curriculum in schools, you know, how to use the nose for different purposes than just breathing in and out. Yeah, we use the eyes, we use the ears. We have amazing senses, and nose is the most important one. Without breathing, you are dead, you know? How do blind people move around, you know? The nose is advanced uh, software, and, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the awareness issue. Second is, as we know, which is the most, I mean, that's a very important issue, is the memory issue, you know? Like, you, I mean, smell memory remain 100% after one year. Vision, 30% after three months. So how can you trigger kids, for example, to learn hardcore, you know, information more efficient, you know? So I've done experiments in learning in the context of abstract smell molecule. So this molecule became the matter molecule because if it already have references, it's over, yeah? If it's smell of a lemon, never work, you know? Like we did a project in, in Wall Street, you know, like stock market up, smell of lemon, stock, 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 stock market down, smell of apple didn't work because people have different relation to those things. But if I give the meaning to it, as abstract smell molecule have no references, it's only matter. Yeah? So you pick it up, you learn matter, you know, and it costs no money, just a little bit of training of the nose, and you learn matter efficient, efficient. Next day you have to test, you recall what you learned yesterday by picking up the smell, and it's amazing. This is the way before computing. The scientists were recording, you know, were, 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 were rendering information. They put different smells in different parts of the lab, learning hardcore formula, and went back to that corner, let's say lavender, whatever natural smells they had, and this information comes up immediately. How do you think your work can make a difference in the world today? Uh, issue one, tolerance. I try to redefine the, 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 the rules of what is clean and what is not. We're living in a global thinking world, cleaning things up in New Delhi or in the, in the townships, you know, wherever uh, you are on this planet Earth, is different than in my country, Norway and Iceland and Germany, etc. Et I think it's about time that we start to, to think about these things, you know, what is bad and what is good and who make the rules and what happens if those rules can turn turn around, you know, and uh, yeah, those rules are made by the industry, purpose marketing, you know. So, I mean, uh, what justify for a good smell? What just for, you know? And, and I think there's a, there's a, there are small details here that has to be, you know, considered, reconsidered and, and taken more, you know, 
to, to next steps in, in yeah. terms of... Uh, yeah, because as I said, tolerance doesn't start with the look of things. It doesn't start with sound, doesn't start with skin color or religion, it starts with the smell, you know? So how can you understand, let's say, tone shit, with, you know, if you can understand the smell, you know? How can you really understand it? Fundamentally, smell go to subconsciousness, immediately trigger emotion, and your reaction to it, you know, is up front, you know? With the image of it, you can, you can, you know, deal with it, and, and you go beyond and, you know, get used to it, but smell is like immediately reaction, you know? Action, reaction, you exactly. know? This is 567 Cape Talk your number one news and talk station.